Dr. Hill is not with y'all this morning, so you're stuck with me. Don't everybody look too excited. I am Stephen. Some of you guys know me. Some of y'all don't. But for those of you that don't know me, I am the youth pastor here at Hollywood Community Church. And so I've been really anxious to be able to um, talk with you guys. And so that way um, I can relate with y'all because I, I get to hang out with youth all day, every day. And that's what my job is. So um, I was really excited when Dr. Hill asked me to speak to you guys. And, um, and then he gave me the verse that he wanted me to teach to y'all. So I guess y'all have been walking through Matthew, right? I don't really know if y'all have. So can I get some nods? Have y'all been walking through Matthew? All right, cool. I like a little interaction, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge y'all. Y'all stay with me. Let's stay awake together and let's do this. But he gave me Matthew 13, 31 through 33. And um, I read this verse, and we're going to get it put up on the screen here. And it says, he put another parable before them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed into his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. Now, I'm a youth pastor, and I read this passage, and I was like, okay, I'm going to teach on this. And then I read it, and I said, I have no idea what that means. Does anybody here know what a mustard seed is? Good, I'm not the only one. Because I read this and was like, what is a mustard seed? No clue. Oh, we got one. You know what a mustard seed is. All right, good. So I read this, and I said, what is a mustard seed? So I began to research what is a mustard seed. Because why is Jesus comparing a mustard seed to the kingdom of God? And I found out that Bible scholars and pretty much nobody knows what a mustard seed is. We don't know what kind of seed that is. But what we do know is that they used it to produce something that tastes like mustard back in the Bible days. And that it is the smallest of seeds, just as Jesus said. So, it doesn't really matter what kind of seed it is. All that we need to focus on is that it's a small seed. So, once I realized that a mustard seed was a small seed, I began to decipher the verse and, and realize what Jesus was saying in this verse. And there's two major things that we can take away that I hope that you can take away from this passage that he, he says to us. And the first is that God's kingdom, the church body, so we are having church right now, we are a group of believers coming together and talking about Jesus, this is church. It doesn't have to be within these walls. It can be outside, it can be anywhere. But when a group of believers come together, that is church. So the first thing we're gonna take away from this is that church started out like a mustard seed and then it grew into something great. And you see, when this passage was written, back when Matthew wrote this, the kingdom of God was very small. So you had Jesus died, rose again, and then you had the group of disciples, Jesus' followers, and you had a handful of other people that believed in Jesus because they had walked with him, they were friends of his, but that was pretty much it. Nobody really understood that Jesus was the savior of the world at the time. So the, the, the kingdom of God started off with just a handful of people. And what God is saying is it started off like a mustard seed, but it's gonna grow into something great. And so Jesus tasked the disciples to take the gospel to all the ends of the earth. And we see that in Mark 16, 15. And he said, it's, it, this verse says, he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And then right after commanding them to do that, Jesus ascended into heaven to be seated by God. Now, I was, I was researching this and I was reading how God commanded the disciples to go and to preach to all the earth, and then it literally says, and then Jesus ascended into heaven to be seated by God. And I couldn't help but think, this is a total squirrel ADD moment that I'm having, but I couldn't help but think that the disciples had to be completely just flabbergasted at this moment. I mean, do you think you could show the disciples anything that would impress them by now? Like, think about it, think about it for a second. They had seen Jesus turn water into wine. They had seen Jesus heal the sick. They had seen Jesus raise people from the dead. They saw Jesus die. And then they saw him rise from the dead. 
and then they see him just up into heaven. Like, that just blows my mind, y'all. I wish I could have been a disciple just to see that moment when Jesus went into heaven. But he tasked them before he went into heaven and said, go to all the ends of the earth and spread the gospel. So you have this mustard seed, starts out small, the kingdom of God starts out with a handful of people, and then as it goes, as the disciples go and they take the gospel to the ends of the earth, it begins to grow. So that mustard seed sprouts, it starts to turn into more of a tree, more of a root system. And what's cool about this verse is it's applicable to our lives today because the kingdom of God is not done growing. And so every time a believer steps into the kingdom of God, every time somebody says yes to Jesus, when you and I have said, if you've said yes to God, you expanded that mustard seed that Jesus was talking about in the parable. You have expanded the kingdom of God. So what does this mean for us? God's kingdom is still growing and it's up to you and I to help it. Jesus commanded his disciples, but what he was really doing is commanding his followers. And if you are a follower of Jesus, then your command is basically the same as the disciples, to go and spread the gospel. The Great Commission tells us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's it. It doesn't say just take the gospel to Florida, take the gospel to Hollywood, take the gospel to Georgia, to the United States. It says take the gospel to all nations. So you see, the kingdom of God is expanding from this mustard seed into something huge and great and strong. So this challenges me personally because God has put the task on me, and that's a huge responsibility, to help grow his kingdom. And so it challenges me to always share my faith, to be sure and to never back down from sharing the gospel with people because I want to honor God and his commandment here. Then secondly, so first we have the mustard seed is a representation of the kingdom of God. It is the kingdom of God and it is gonna grow into something great. It has began growing into something great but he's not even done with it growing into something great. The second thing we can take from this verse and this is one of my favorite things that I pulled from this verse is that God never starts something that he won't finish strong. Okay, let me tell you that again. God never takes something weak and leaves it weak that he won't finish strong. And and we can talk all day long about what that looks like, but two examples that immediately came to my mind are if you look at Jesus Christ, he came in the form of a baby. He came in the form of something small. He didn't come to the earth a full grown man. He could have. He could have come to the earth and immediately gone to the cross, but why didn't he? He came to teach us about God, to show us how to live, to show us love and compassion and these things that he taught us for the years he was on the earth. And so God didn't just leave him a weak baby. He was the savior of the world. So he grew from that mustard seed into something strong. He was always great, but he came in such a small package. And then I think of Moses. Moses was was God's instrument. If, If you know the story of Moses, He was almost killed as a baby, but God saved him. And then he was used as God's instrument to free the slaves out of of Egypt, to free the Israelites. God used him in a powerful way. But the story of Moses begins when he was a mustard seed, when he was something small, something weak. And then you see Moses grow into something strong, and God uses him. So that's just a couple of different stories. that, that I personally think about when I hear the word mustard seed and think of God using something, something small to grow into something strong. Um, any, anybody here ever play with Legos? You can raise your hand, don't be embarrassed by it. Like I used to play with Legos and, and sometimes maybe I still do. <laughs> so how about any puzzle builders? Anybody build puzzles? Kind of same thing, we got a couple teachers back there. So, so there's two types of people in this world, right? There's the Lego builders that take and they take all their Legos and they organize them by brick, by color, by everything, and then they get ready to build their masterpiece, right? And then there's people like me, when I was a kid and I would build Legos and I would take the whole box and just poof on the floor. 
dump them all over the place. And then I would look for that one brick on page one of the instructions. You're looking for that one brick and you find something that sort of looks like that brick. And at that point, I'm so tired of looking through how all the bricks on the floor that I'm just like, okay, this looks close enough. We'll just go with it. And then my Lego creation turns into a disaster. So I started off with all these pieces on the floor and, and I'm trying to build this creation. One of my favorite things to build from Legos, any Star Wars fans in here? Man, y'all, y'all don't watch Star Wars? Nobody? Okay, so the Millennium Falcon, the, the, the star, you know, Han Solo's spaceship, that was my favorite Lego piece. And, and so I'm trying to build this Lego piece, and my Millennium Falcon, there was no way it would have ever flown. It was tiny. It was destroyed. I couldn't finish it. And finally, I just gave up. I was like, you know what? This is not my calling to build Legos. But aren't you glad that God isn't like that? You see, God doesn't start something that he's not going to finish. He doesn't take the mustard seed and just say, you know what? It's going to remain a mustard seed. I give up on it. God's not like how Stephen builds Legos. God is going to make something that is weak, strong. But you have to be faithful. So what I can say to you is that if you relate this to your life, that you can know that the promise of God is that you are not gonna remain a mustard seed if you are faithful to him. That's the first step. You have to be faithful to him. You have to be walking with him. You have to be in his word. You have to be praying with him. You have to be a follower of Jesus. And then his promise is that he's not gonna remain, you're not gonna remain a mustard seed, that you're gonna grow into something strong. And that's a good promise, y'all. And that's something that I've personally lived because there's been times in my life where I felt like I was just gonna remain a mustard seed. And you see, the enemy wants to use that. He wants to tell us all the lies that he can and say, you know what? You're gonna be a mustard seed for the rest of your life because you're not good enough. You're, you have no self-worth. You're horrible at sports. You can't do anything academically. You are just, you're, you're garbage. That's what the enemy is gonna tell us. But we combat that with, you know what? I serve a God who turns mustard seeds into great trees. And if I follow that God and walk with him, then I'm gonna take every lie the enemy dishes out at me and I'm gonna throw it to the side because I know my God is faithful and I know that I'm not gonna remain a mustard seed. I've had to use that in my life, guys, because there have been times where the enemy told me that I was insignificant, I wasn't good enough, I was never gonna do anything with my life or make a name for myself. But then I started walking with Jesus. And then I started realizing that, you know what? I can't do it. I will remain a mustard seed. But when I put my faith in him, that's when he's gonna grow me. And I'm still growing and I'm still trekking with him and I'm still hoping to pursue that state of being a strong force in his kingdom. But I can't do it on my own. So my challenge to you is when the enemy comes against you, think about this verse. When the enemy comes against you and when he says, your grades are low, you're losing all your games in sports, you're garbage, you just, you can't, nope, you're a horrible person. When he comes against you and says that, you tell Satan, you know what, that's not my God. My God's not one that's gonna leave me a mustard seed. And you proclaim that over your life, because here's the truth, guys. If you are a Christ follower, if you are a believer in Jesus, if you accepted Jesus Christ, then you've started that transformation of growing. But here's what the enemy will do. The enemy will come against you because he can't have your soul if you're a believer in Jesus. If you're a Christ follower, he cannot have your soul, but what he can have is your calling. He can prevent you from doing what you're supposed to do. He can take and prevent you from being that strong tree that God has intended on you being. So what you gotta do is you gotta combat every single lie that he throws at you because you know what? You are built for great things. You are destined for awesomeness. I mean, each and every one of you, God has wired passions into your heart to be used for his glory. So whether you're, you're into sports, whether you're into academics, whether you're into video games, whether you're into whatever, music, God has put those things there to grow from mustard seeds to trees. But you gotta walk with him. And if you don't, then you're gonna remain something small. When we walk with, with God, we take what's small. He takes what's small, and he makes it great. So that's my challenge to you today. 
is that as you're walking through your day, as you're walking through school today, if you get your report card and it's looking low, don't give up. Don't give up. But just keep telling yourself that if I'm faithful, God is always faithful. So if I have faith and I walk with him, that I will be something significant. I will do great things for his name and his glory. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. And God, we're so glad that we can come here today and we can proclaim that you're not gonna leave us in a state of being a mustard seed, God. You are gonna take our weaknesses and make them strengths, God. But we have to walk with you. So Lord, I thank you for these students. I thank you for the ones that have chosen to walk with you. And I thank you for the ones that are, are choosing to take that mustard seed, that small feeling of insignificance, and they're choosing to walk with you day by day to make themselves into something great, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to see what you're gonna do through them, God, and how you're gonna take and make them into trees. And God, I pray for the ones that are not walking with you, the ones that haven't accepted you. I pray that they be convicted, Lord, that you are God and that Jesus is Lord, and that they take that first step, God, to begin growing. We love you, and we praise you, Lord. It's in your name. Amen.